<laughs> it's been exciting already, this gig. I'm not going to lie. I've been watching you come in. Uh, yeah, it sounds creepy. But uh, I've been doing it through... I've got a peephole in that curtain, which doesn't do my creepiness any, <laughs> any favours. I've got a peephole. Ah, I've got a peephole in that curtain. I'm pretty sure it's not meant to be a peephole. That's not the reason why it's been put in there, because it's not in a very convenient place. I'm going to level with you. I'll point it out to you. It's just... James Acaster, hello. Hello, hello Kenny. Hi. Hi. Yeah, good, thank you, yeah. Spent all day watching DVDs, if I'm honest. I've got the, the West Wing on box set. I'm working my way through it. Uh, I just put it in the player every morning, press play all, and do a proper marathon all day. And I feel bad calling it a marathon, if I'm honest, because I'm sure if you're an actual marathon runner, one of the most offensive terms, <laughs> I, that is the exact opposite of what they live their lives for. <laughs> it's just like... I'm doing a marathon this weekend. Which one? Sopranos. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been training for months watching back-to-back -back episodes of Cracker. I'm ready. The first comedian I saw was Lee Evans on, on, a, on a video. It's like a best-of video. And I, I'd never seen stand-up comedy before and just I, I couldn't get over it. Like, I was laughing so much for like, the whole thing and didn't know how on earth he knew all this stuff about my life. And I thought it was incredible. And uh, so he, he was the first person I got into. Now, what you've got to know about me before I carry on is I'm very excitable. I'm a very excitable guy. I get excited doing tally charts, like just counting at things with little lines. Right, I know it's boring to begin with. <laughs> yeah, one, two, three, and four. They're pretty boring. But um, <laughs> we know it's about to get better, don't we, mate? <laughs> Number five's on its way. We get to do the diagonal line now. It's not a person in this room when they do the diagonal line and a little bit of tallying so they get a short bit of joy, just go... <laughs> Don't worry if you didn't all get that, by the way, because uh, one day I'm going to get a gig in a prison it's going to tear the roof off. <laughs> but I didn't decide I wanted to do comedy until I watched uh, Eddie Izzard and Ross Noble and realised I could talk about anything I wanted. Because I was never good at... Like, I could never think about... So I'd watch the Evans and think, well, I can't ever write that because he's doing observational stuff. Uh, and every time I tried to do an observational thing with my mates or whatever, it never worked. Like, I could never really do observations with people. Uh, and that, so I thought oh, I wouldn't be able to be a stand-up. And I saw Eddie Izzard and went, oh, you can talk about whatever you like. And I thought, oh, OK. Well, then I'll, and then I started thinking about doing it. I'm from a place called Kettering, which, uh, if you don't know it, is a small town next to the Weetabix factory. Uh, yeah, you should be impressed, sir. It's a very popular dish. And uh, all of you who eat wheat you will eat it in different ways as well. Some of you might cover it in yogurt and honey. Other people, strawberries and cream or sugar and raisins. Basically, just get wheat -abix and cover it in anything that tastes better than wheat -abix. That's That's the rule, isn't it? If a bit is kind of working and I really like it, then I'll work on it more until it works. And uh, I've got a little bit better now at... Um, at sticking at something even if it's not working. I, I, I think sometimes I don't give uh, routines enough chances. I think someone told me that um, Frank Skinner gives things three chances and then he, if it hasn't worked, he stops doing it. And then someone else told me that Stuart Lee, when he was doing his vomiting into the gaping anus of Christ routine, it, it, it was like he did it about 27 times with it, without it working and then just changed how he was doing it and then it suddenly started working. And I'd like to be more like that I'd like to be able to go um, you know I want to do this bit and I will make it work eventually and I don't mind how many times it dies. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person who's ever done this as well on a regular basis pretended to look at a donut. I'm going to put myself out there probably the best donut face impersonator that's ever lived. <laughs> I thought about it there's loads of different flavours of donut out there each I'd imagine with their own different corresponding face that goes with them. I reckon I could do them all. No. Looking around, rightfully, there's some doubting Thomases in the room. I think I'm just flapping my gums, right? But uh, don't worry, that's why I brought it up. Originally I was doing a bit about fondue on the tour and I was uh, telling audiences that you can turn any meal into a fondue meal. You just need to divide it into dippers and dip and I'd get them to name a meal and I'd tell them which bits was going to be the dip and what was going to be the dippers. And it was really quite, it was a bit difficult to make it work. It, wasn't really, it was a bit of a flimsy idea, a bit too much of a, of a leap. But I liked going into the audience and asking something and then doing something really small with it that was, that was um, quite disappointing. So uh, I tried to think of something that I already had that I could turn into a similar thing and thought with that in your ring story I could change it into looking at donuts. Okay, let's have your donut. 
but with Marmite on it. Yeah, you happy? You did the finger slap. Good. <laughs> Those three are discussing whether that's allowed or not. <laughs> are you okay? It doesn't look like an onion ring anymore. Right. <laughs> While I'm glad you are taking this bit so seriously, <laughs> and I am, I am really happy that you lot are getting involved in this. And you're not letting it go into the realms of the absurd. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just try and do a face, you know. <laughs> I, I, I also, you know, think you try and get better at everything, really, and try and get better at you know, uh, writing tight routines as well that just would work in, not at any club, but like, you know, that, that would, would work in front of a mainstream crowd and, and stuff as well, because that's hard and that's that's difficult also. Um, so, yeah, it's always like, it, if, if I think the idea is funny, I'll do it. And so um, sometimes it, it's more of a risk and I've got to, you know, figure out how to do it and it'll take a bit longer. And sometimes it's uh, it's, it's, it's got to be a tightly written bit and that would take me a long time as well to like actually think of how it should be worded and get across what's funny in my head to the audience so uh yeah it's sort of a mixture of um every now and again take doing a bit that takes a risk i think it's nice to throw it in there amongst a load of normal routines let's have a you know cause the show starts with quite a few straightforward routines for a while and then goes into this a bit more of a risk-taking bit and i think it's nice in an hour maybe for me to to, to have that in there to have like we just cruising along for a bit and then suddenly we'll go a bit weird. This is the biggest group effort we've had so far <laughs> on the donuts. This is a Marmite jam and cream filled donut, which would usually be in a finger. <laughs> but we put it into a ring shape. <laughs> That's why you're my favourite audience so far. <laughs> so get ready for this proper cup. Okay. This this is <laughs> if I need to remind you. Marmot jam and cream filled donut normally in the finger, but put it in the ring, here we go. This is for five people. <laughs> Genuinely feeling pressure on this one. I don't ever feel pressure on the toilets. <laughs> Genuinely feel like I've got to get this one right. Okay. There you go. There we go. <laughs> We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Come on. Never laughed before. <laughs> there we go. Don't laugh, mate. You'll set me off.